be proven I know I sound crazy to the ones who said I
my blood for the last time This ain't a song, it's a battle cry No life I see the clue between the strobe lights and honey Black face, hey, follow me around, okay, ah Black face, hey, follow me around, okay, ah Used to want it bad, used to want it bad, but I, I can't taste it, huh? Got too much up on my plate, now I can't think I said, woke up, take a an X and now I'm feeling this is it Want the money, want the rest I do purse, not no sex They say, Don, it's why you sad I said, I just need to think Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the continuation here of our first series of the day between OG and Pack for the Intel Extreme Masters New York closed qualifiers for EU. I'm Jason Kappen, still joined by Tom Biz, and we're into a third map. Who would have expected this, Tom? Because honestly, at the start of the day, I can I can say I did not expect this to go three maps. However, I am pleasantly pleased to see Pact push them to a third and final map. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Like, I, I, it is pretty much, yeah. I, I think Pact have shown that they can definitely fight on train, but that, I think that's always been something that works well for their squad. Inferno, on the other hand, they a lot of the win, the victories they have against like smaller teams, lesser teams, and even then, like for example, they've lost a map to the Lingby Vikings. I, I don't know if you're accustomed I've heard that to that name so many times. For Vikings. Some reason. No, the really? Lingby Vikings, yeah. Well, they're, they're not a team that we really see too often, even in like the tier two, tier three scene. So, and that was a dominant victory for them. So, again, we're going to give this heavily in the favor of OG, but we've seen some of the stars step up, like Goofy and Sobo have definitely been players to watch so far. Been a little bit disappointed with Benice. Like, he definitely had his moments on train, but the last map, he almost went completely missing. Now, this is an interesting setup. They've shown themselves on Banana on the T side, and the ZTs are actually oh. starting to push down mid. There is Maniz! Comes up with two quick headshots, and the rest of the team are looking to push through the apartments. The problem with this is there are four players around A, eh, Jason. A little bit of a rough start for them. And it seems to be just getting that much more rough, though, as they're still closing this out almost perfectly. As you can see... Four kills come in for Minis. What a start by him. I mean, obviously, we talked about him a ton for Pact, especially when it came to the whole start of the match. But to get a 4K and like that, that's something he should be definitely proud of. Yeah, and especially as someone who we want to see get on that AWP a little bit later in the match, of course, on 
the defense, it's kind of expected to see that AWP come in eventually. But we'll see whether or not he's actually going to play it much more on the attacking side of things. Five nades, though. The nuclear strike looking to come in at the top of Banana as they run through the Molotov. Unlucky Darko, you've just caught a hell of a lot of nades. Of course, the goal here is to try and get themselves a bomb plant. And they may be able to do that. Although, it seems like the person with bombs a little bit further behind. And I don't know if they're going to be able to get this across anymore. They still have one nade left, and they have Alda as well with an MP9. The two players still watching the crossy corner. Now he spots out the first, but he unfortunately shoots a wall a little bit too much. The nades come in and done a pretty good amount of damage. The Sobel tries to peek in towards the site, and Valde might have just given the distraction they needed alone what? as he picks himself up a quad kill. With an MP9. And a second round when they lost the pistol. What just happened, Tom? I don't know. I don't, like that was them investing into just HEs, like, like each, and it got them a kill, an MP9, and that was enough for Valde. Like I, I can't say that's something I've seen before, where someone just manages to. Well, I, I've seen people be clinical with an MP9, but not when they don't have any, any armor. That that should have been an easy trade in reality, but instead they just didn't close him out. They were too focused on trying to deny the player crossing to the site, and well, that's gone horribly wrong for Pack. A strong start, but it's been switched up. The Deeg spam will get them a kill, actually. How's he alive? Hello? How's he alive? The counter flashes have come in. Lunatic saves him, and it's three kills because of that. Such good supportive flashbangs from the man on site to keep Darko alive for way longer than he ever should have been. And now this becomes awkward, and I really like the position from Sobel. He's not facing. He's not fighting. He's just sat down at the bottom of mid on the T-ramp, just waiting in case they try and cross back. All about that information game. I... I... Darko. I don't understand. MBK, though, giving some semblance of normality in this round. Potentially, Goofy comes in big with another kill. He's going to eventually fall, though, which does put it into a one-on-one. -on -one. And he's... Uh... Is he going to make the run towards A? Yeah, looks like he's going to go for it. The thing is, is that Sobel now has a chance to rescue a weapon here. But with no kit in hand, the likelihood of him defusing this bomb, I think is going to be a little bit too much to ask for here, Tom. But at least he should have a weapon. Yeah, this is a very long rotation to make. And you've got, what, 30 seconds to get all the way back, kill Issa, and defuse the bomb. I, 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 I don't really believe that that's going to be possible. Of course, the 10 second diffuser will be necessary. And it's a. Uh, we'll probably hear all the footsteps. That's the thing. Sobel doesn't have a choice but to move as quickly as he possibly can. And this is just waiting for him to try and cross. Very well played. I, Issa deserves a lot of credit for this round coming back into their favor after what was a real mishap in the beginning of the round. Massive props, though, to Lunatic, because uh, sure, of course, Darko gets the kills. He also survives in that corner way longer than he should have done, even without the flash. But that flash coming in, that was just off the back of a whim. His teammate, it was clearly communicated because he looks into the wall, and that gets those second couple of kills because both of the players there were completely blind. So huge props need to go to, to Lunatic for those flash assists, even if he's not the one fragging on the server. He can definitely still do his part. Unfortunately for Pack, they don't manage to convert that round, no matter how close it is. Darko, though, this time, that seems like he doesn't need the support. Alexi B will meet the same fate. As it's a one deke to take him out of the round. And while this is a round where OG, they need to be keeping it clean. I mean, what's, what's so painful about that last round for me is that yeah they got four kills like they they were able to do so much damage to og but it doesn't really matter in the end because they fully buy up into this round pact can't really buy up anymore because they forced in the round prior i mean yeah the money's gonna hurt a, a little bit for og but if they close this round relatively cleanly with their last four players left alive it just doesn't really seem to net too much for pact except maybe some morale which obviously you can't underestimate a little bit of momentum for him. I think OG are in a position now to shut that right back down again. Lunatic's going to spot one on the cross. It's going to be MBK to look to push in towards CT. Maybe to wrap around behind Lunatic. MBK's got to be careful because there's rotations from B coming in at the same time. Oh. 
it's now starting to look a little bit easier for them. As you said, like that, that first kill was nice. It's a bit of extra damage. Another one would at least make things more costly, but it isn't going to happen. So OG survived with four players alive. They build up some extra cash, looking good on the T side. And those sort of early round problems have, have kind of been diminished here. Alexi B actually still going to be going for a MAC-10. Now, I wonder if that means we're going to see the same play again with him just barreling up Banana, which is something he's done two rounds in a row. Or if they're going to switch things up. Like, a lot of the time, if you go for a burst onto the A site, you have a player with a MAC-10 jumping out of apartments. So, it's possible they go for something like that as well. But we'll just have to wait and see what he has in store. And by the looks of it, eh, it's Banana again. Oh my gosh, Darko. He's really locking down Banana the best he can. Another two kills comes in for him. Unfortunately, again, it's not going to be enough as... Rotation, a Goofy's going to head back towards the B site to help protect this. And he's even maybe to looking to uh, push up in towards the middles, but he's been kept honest. He's knocked down to 41 health. And this has been a bloodbath towards Banana Tom. Like, both teams really not wanting to give up this position in any of these rounds. But I kind of... You have to respect that, Apat, because at some point, you, you, you really can't afford to let Banana go too often. At least that early on. The Goofy's going to be dropped by Issa as they get in towards the site. And now the last two players, Sobel and Miniz, probably just going to save these weapons. And OG going to be up 4-1 to one so far. It's not even like strategy that they're winning rounds off of, though, it feels like. Tom, it just feels like just raw aim. I mean, there was like a 2-on-2 two -two peak. What, 3-on-2 peak in favor of the T side on Banana. They lose 2, but they kill 2. Yeah, the, the, the problem is, like especially for Pact at the moment, is... Because of that, like, pistol win and then a loss. We, we speak about that being as damaging to the economy as you can basically get in Counter-Strike because normally your loss bonus can only be that low if you've been winning rounds. So, realistically, you'd have a bit of extra cash unless there's a round where maybe you die to the bomb or something. But uh, the problem for them is they have to be taking the risks. I, I'm more interested how their rounds are going to play out once they have full utility because this round was, okay, we have rifles you look at it as the basics and you go okay this isn't a bad buy but inferno doesn't really work like that you need your incendiaries you need those he's to stop the level of aggression and so their sort of resolve to that was okay fine we'll just take banana away from them and sure it starts off very well they've been able to get the kills onto alexi b pretty much every single time you can see he's one and five at the moment but he, it's almost, it almost feels to me like Alexi B knows that. Like, he's almost acting as cannon fodder. Like, I want to get up at the top banana. I want to try and take that control away. And sure, it takes a very good spray from MBK to get that double. But that's kind of what Alexi B is trying to set up. Like, okay, I know they're going to fight me, so I'll take the fight to them. And then my teammates, all they really need to do is get the trade. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that's the setup that he's throwing. And I, I don't think that Alexi B is the sort of player that will do the same thing three times in a row and die three times in a row if there isn't a plan behind it. Unless, of course, he's completely lost the plot, but I I'm going to go ahead and say I don't believe that. Well, let's see if... Coming to the next round, Mansu's going to go for the peak. Man, actually, Pat going to give them a lot more quarter in this round. Obviously, they don't have the in the uh, equipment to really do that, right? They don't have the nades already there, the weaponry either. Ooh, at least get the kill on Isa as he tries to jump into the window, maybe hoping he'd stop shooting. So early man advantage for Pact. Not a bad way to start things off. And I, I mean, obviously, I respect the uh, the switch up in pace for them towards Banana out of Pact, making sure to play really defensive. Again, they have Darko with the Deagle and they have Lunatic with the P250 here to defend, and one smoke and one flash. So they're really hoping they don't go towards this bomb side and. Problem is, the smoke's already gone down, and there's a minute left to go, with only one left to defend with. So I think Mantu might have an opportunity for a peek here if he rounds this corner, Tom. Hmm. There was no sound cue there, was there? Hmm? I don't believe there's a sound cue for the for the smoke to be thrown. I think that was just a timing thing. Yeah, I, I think they're just trying to almost bait them into a push onto this A site. Like, you could see them rotate a little bit just in case there was an attempted timing hit by OG, but... It's it's clear that Pact are trying to bait them into either a push through smoke. Uh, they could have just waited behind that if they really wanted to, but they have 
hopefully force them in the other direction. The surprising factor is that they currently have two players in CT. Like, they're almost just spotting for the rotation. And the problem with that is they're really relying on this one man here, the rifle of Sobel. He's going to be forced out by the Molotov, pushed into the open. Oh. Goofy's just going to be pre-fired. I love it from Alexi B. You don't fool this man. No surprises to be found. And a yeah, really nice take from OG. They're, they're basically allowing Pack to use a lot of their utility early in these rounds and then just go for these later executions. Obviously, from here onwards, that's going to be a bit tougher as there'll be a lot more utility for Pact, but th these are just reads coming in, and while the polls so far haven't really been able to play versus this T side, which has had a fair amount of money throughout the beginning stages of this half. Just looks like nuke to me, to be honest, Tom. They really didn't have a chance to play too much on the uh, CT side either there in the first half. Two weapons, really important to save these, though. I'd say for Pact. Nice goes for the shots, gets the first, but gets traded out on, and well, that's gonna do it. OG up five to one. Dark is gonna maintain the AK for the next round, and we do see Minis go for the AWP. And I think this is where things could potentially change in their favor. But we see Mantu is able to keep his over from rounds before as well. And I, I mean, I know we talked about this before. I know during Pal 2020, the Summer Asia RMR event, like we didn't really see too many ops on the T side. But I wonder how OG can kind of use it here in this situation. Maybe he's going to go for the peek in towards Banana like we saw in the round before. Maybe he gets a challenge up middle as well. It seems like it's going to be a big crash onto Banana once again here. Oh. Oh. This is what I wanted to see. Oh. Like, just look at the nades coming out from Pact. They, they showed us some triple stacks previously, but these were almost staggered. Just in case they thought they were finally safe. And well, Valve's gone down. It's not Alexi B this time, although he also sits on 15 HP. And this was basically what I mentioned. Like, up until this point, we hadn't seen a buy with grenades behind it. So we can't tell what the CT side of Pact is going to be like because we haven't seen a buy yet. And this is already a, a far better start. They've still got a decent amount of utility. They've got four smokes and incendiary and some flashbangs, kits on multiple players. This is the true test. And there goes the smoke. MBK's just going through it though he, he doesn't care you can have as many nades as you want if he hits the headshots it is meaningless and mantu does just that now they do have some grenades for the retake but it more relies on what minis can do here and actually that deep molotov seems to have disrupted their, their plan flashbang comes through though Goofy looking for the challenge he can't win the battle up against isa so will he eat neither and minis just gonna be forced to save the AWP here. So again, OG. OG. Lose a couple of players, but they still take the round nonetheless. Up six to one now. And packed. I have to wonder what's gonna change. I mean, if you if you think about how that round started, the the, the double Molotovs, the triple nade, and they get so much damage done early, but they can't close the round out. That's just so unfortunate for him, Tom. Yeah, and I, and I think, again, you just have to give props to OG for the entry frags. Uh, this is something I, I spoke about in the last map, where, where if the right players are popping off for OG, that there is basically nothing that Pact can do. This round, MBK, it, he basically just plays the timing around the smoke. It, it lands just as he gets through, able to do enough damage that, that basically it just had to be trades from that point onwards. And that's invaluable to your team. Like, if you can get away with so much, with that much utility being expended behind it, it's going to be rough for the poles. Either way, six to one. Very good money still on the side of OG, as they have oh, now won six rounds in a row. Mini's getting tagged early. Yeah, Mantu. I mean, there's a smoke down, just randomly shoots through the wall and catches him. I mean, we've seen even an adaptation for them here. I mean, Minis is going to be towards B this round, expecting to get some sort of challenge in that direction. But as we can see, it's going to be a hit towards the A site. At least it's looking like it's a hit towards the A site with a lot of time remaining. And right, Sobel and Pit. So he has the smoke to protect himself if the Molotov comes in, which we do see three still currently up for OG. But they've not been able to defend this site well. Only time they were able to do it was off an initial Minis double kill down middle in the pistol round. But here we go, Tom. Looks like they're going to execute and wrap heavily around towards the art side. 
Yeah, they've gained so much control. They're just going to have to defend from within the site, and I, I don't know how they're going to manage to do that. Maybe with a little bit of magic. Goofy has held on to two. The bomb is going to be planted. Alexi B is so low that this will be a very easy kill, and now it's left all onto the natural born killer. This is a rough position, and he'll get one, but Sobo is very quick to react to make sure that's not going to go any further. So a second round on the board at least for Pact, and although they only have two players surviving because of how the last few rounds have gone with the extra saves, with players being earning the maximum loss bonus, the money's not going to be in a bad state. The main issue will be is if they lose this round. And then, well, Jason, I, I think you can start to think about this going in a similar direction to what we saw on Nuke. Yeah. I mean, I, again, like so many times now, I've seen Goofy just be so clutch. Like that double kill he gets, he loses his teammate tucked away inside. I think that was Lunatic boosted up on the box. Doesn't even see them coming from Arch side. But then he picks up a nice double. And I think he even gets like a dink onto Alexi B, which then turned into a bomb plant and then uh, him finished off by Sobel. But just like, the amount of times he's had like some of these clutch kills and you know these two three k's have been so invaluable to pact it's just unfortunate when it came down to nuke and it came down to train they weren't able to close out well you can't really say it came down to, to train because they did win the round or did win the match i should say no i should be saying the map oh tom help me please <laughs> it's been a long time since i cast a counter strike but there's gonna be two players towards pit it looks like for pact here so I wonder why they're holding so far back so early on. Maybe they're just trying to play the delay game since we see Darka rotate towards the B site. And OG haven't really challenged early on towards Banana like they typically do. Yeah, they're giving so much space to OG though. This take, it just they can wrap all the way around, then push into the site and no one knows anything. Like, in Inferno is one of those maps where information is king. Like, you need to almost know what's going on. You need these slight pushes and... I'll be honest with you. I, I want to see another pause come out from Pact because from what I'm seeing so far, like in, in the early stages of this map, they were challenging. They were fighting for middle. They were looking for pushes. Now they're trying to sit back. And I understand that at times, but you need at least some information. Like normally you try and take either Banana or you fight at least for as competent as Alexi B, an in-game leader. He's going to have spotted that in the last round. Even though they didn't manage to get the victory, he just went, well... We get mid for free. Like, we can just take that. We can just run up there and get a very fast push. And if they're playing off rotations and gambles, eventually we're just going to catch them in the open. I I'm not liking the look of this CT side from Pact. I, I think it's very... It's almost luck orientated. Like, because you don't, don't know when to rotate because you don't have any information. I mean, I I've seen, like some ways to play the a set like that where you have the two players in pit just kind of smoke it off and then just like buy time but that then comes down to the, the t's responding if they just jump in towards pit or they do finish off those kills but i mean i've seen it work sometimes but i don't think it's ever going to work against a team like og or at least it wasn't set up in a way that pat could make it work i, I feel like but yeah no information early on I mean, they, they had information that they weren't going towards B because they had three players towards Banana and there was no contact at all out of OG in the last round. And we'll speak about this round. There's contact that's going the way of OG. Because now it's going to be Minis to rotate in. Only has the USP in hand though, so you can't really expect too, too much from it. But this is looking like a, a slaughter, honestly, Tom. And, and to be fair, this is kind of what I expected in, in the whole series. I thought this was going to be a relatively quick 2-0. Right now, Inferno aren't looking too strong for him. Yeah, I, I think the difference, though, from, from Train was they looked confident playing the map. Like, especially on the T side, they were very happy to take mid control, like battle for the A side very early in the round, and were just working as a unit. The problem I'm seeing with the CT side here is that, as said, like, OG are able to get away with too much. Like, be it the battle for Banana, like, they seem to be able to.